Hello everybody, welcome to Red Pool House. On today's video, I want to do kind of a, a, a series because I've got several of these to deal with, see what you guys think. But we're going to see if we can go from trash to treasure, from deadfall to usable lumber. And we're going to start with this big red oak here on top of the mountain. So come along with us and let's get into this guy. All right, so if it sounds like I'm out of breath and so is my dog, then you would be correct because <laughs> We are at the top of the ridge. I want to show you on the map where we are. But I also want to show you real quick what it took to get here. I've walked this trail uh, multiple times. In fact, that's how I knew this tree was down. That Tim, Timber and I come walking through here. But I haven't been up here with a piece of equipment in a while. So count with me the number of trees that I had to cut up in, able, in, in order to get the side-by-side -side right to this spot. Carry on. Oh. Huh. It's a long way around. Take your time, Cletus. You're not in my seat, are you? All right, so what are we dealing with here? Well, we're dealing with what a, what's considered a black oak, which if you're into timber, uh, lumber industry, it's really just, just a red oak. They classify them as such. Uh, scarlet oak, I believe. Um, I'm not that good at identifying that far down. I think we have 20 some species of oak just in West Virginia. But um, this would be what I call a red oak. And as you can see here, she snapped off right at the trunk. So I wanna see if this beautiful straight log lane here is hollow as a gourd <laughs> and thus not worth the time coming up here or if it actually has some lumber potential so um, let's explore it shall we and we'll start poking holes in it too so if this was a chestnut oak i wouldn't even waste my time because they get hollow all the way up through the center but this red oak you can see it's got definitely some core rot even some termite action going on there and right now, this is about five and a half feet off the ground. And then it had a tear out here when it fell. And you can see that tear out still there. So if we go looking up in here, we can see maybe some little squirrel action going on there. Yep, it's hollow through there. I'm gonna make this first cut right here and see what we can get. But look down that, that is really nice. Not a limb for a ways, a little bit of a curve, but when we cut it to log length, we can take that curve out. So let's just see what our maximum potential is here. We'll start with our loggers tape, and I'm gonna stick it right in this spot where I'm gonna make my first cut. See how optimistic I can be. That is 39 feet to this crotch. So that's a lot of log lying there. A lot, a lot, a lot of lying log. Lie a lot of log. Let's check diameter. She be. She's right at 17 inches diameter. So that's not too bad. That'll fit comfortably on the mill uh, without being too much uh, to deal with. It'd still be worth getting off the hill. Am I on your way? I have a feeling your heavy panting is picking up on the mic and people are like, would you please 
stop the dog from panting. You know, naming this dog Timber was the most appropriate thing in the world to do. This dog absolutely loves wood scrap. Watch this. Timber. Tim. Tim. Watch it. All right. So let's stick a saw in and see what happens. All right, so that thing was definitely wedged in there. Once I got to bust it out, I think we may be in really good shape here. So we had a little bit of tear out right here. That's from the, from the fall, that came from this. But that only goes up another four inches. And then as you can see, got a little bit of a split through the core. So that obviously happened when it fell. A little bit of an inclusion here with some tear out. And then here's just a little bit of rot. Barely can stick my index finger in it. And it doesn't go very far at all, actually. So uh, I think I may cut another 12 inches off of this and see if it cleans up. All right, I think we've got a winner here. So the rot is gone. We still have a split. But she is diminishing. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut a... I think I want to do a 12-footer. Cut a 12-foot log from this direction. And we'll fish that one out. And we'll see what that leaves us. All right, so it looks like we got three good saw logs out of that, each 12 feet long, but we're really not gonna know how good they are till we get them down in the mill and get them cracked open and see what's inside. So uh, that'll be my next step. Get down off the mountain, grab the tractor and all the accoutrements I need for skidding, and get up here and start dragging these off one at a time. And you may be able to tell by the shadows, it's getting a little long in the day, so we may pick this up tomorrow, but I'll bring you guys with me. Timber, come. Timber. Come here. All right, so we're ready to get our third log. Kelly's been helping me, following along, doing some video work. And what'd you say it was? 0.6 miles? Yeah. So from the sawmill to here is 0.6. So obviously round trip, that's 1.2 miles. And we're doing that three times. So <laughs> that's a long way to go for a couple logs, isn't it? And it took us, what, 14 minutes to get up here? And probably about the same to get down with a log. So... Uh, is what it is, but we're anxious. I'm anxious to see just what's inside this log. I, I think it's gonna be real pretty. So let me get this last one hitched up and we'll get down to the mill and we'll get the mill fired up.
All right, so I put the first one, or actually the last one, this is the log highest up on the tree, and it's got some bows in it, it's got some knots, so it's going to be the less desirable of the three. In fact, you can even see there's a little taper here. I'm going to take a chainsaw, and I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice about here back. So the last four feet I'm going to cut off because I want, um, I want to get a clean, as much clean material out here as possible. And with that taper, I'm just going to be wasting a bunch. So I want to go ahead and just cut that off and I'll roll it over here. If I roll it off the hill, it comes down here into my uh, wood pile that I use for making lump coal. So it'll be used for that. Well, somebody forgot to take the blade off from the last time, and this blade is due a changing, but I've left, left it out here and it's gotten rusted up pretty badly. So I'm going to run it to square my cant so that as it gets dull with bark, then I'm not starting with a brand new fresh blade, and that will actually take the rust off. So I'll show you. So that blade still had some life in her, so I went ahead and not only squared the cant, but went ahead and cut the boards that I wanted. Now, because that was the third log, or the, the highest portion of the tree before we got to any main branches, it had a lot of knots, which knots, of course, are branches that start out and either get sheared off or just uh, broken, or, or the tree just becomes dominant in that area and, and grows over it. So I'll show you here in a second what that produces on the inside and makes that wood less desirable. So I decided to go ahead and go to uh, two by tens, true two by tens, and use that for some structural things I need to do up at the, um, up at the boar's pig pen. But let's look at this blade. Just amazing how it does such a good job of taking all that surface rust off of there. So there's some discoloration, but there's not that buildup of rust that you would get, or that I had, and that would cause difficulty when running through the set and the sharpener. So I'll be able just to take a uh, wire brush, knock this down real quick, and be able to put it through my sharpener to get it all dressed back up. to be dull it sure is still pointy all right so here's those two bys and you can see a little water on here good looking wood but just got some rot in it here and there 
this is a spot where there's a lot of good ray fleck. That medullary ray fleck grain you see there is really pretty. So I think what we're going to find is with the uh, further we go down on the tree, the less we're going to have knot and rot issues. And uh, so we'll get into our next ones. Well, as I take a small break to get the sawdust out of my eyes, <laughs> when the bog off my glasses, I wanted to remind everybody that uh, when we hit the 100,000 subscriber mark, we said we'd do a drawing and we're going to give away some Ruck P EDC knives. I carry them constantly. In fact, I think I have two of them in my pocket right now. Yes, there goes two now. Um, drop one in the woods, dummy. So we're going to do that drawing. I'm going to give away color sets. So I believe there's five colors in a set. So that's five knives. And I'm going to give away a set of each. I'm going to give away five sets of five. So there'll be five winners. And we'll have um, those drawings coming up here in the next two weeks. So if you haven't filled out our survey, that's how you register automatically. If you want to fill out the survey and you don't want your, your email captured by me to do dirty things with, no. I don't do anything with your email other than to communicate with you. I don't sell it to anybody. But if you want to leave your email, that'll register for the drawing. And we'll do that in about two weeks. And the reason why I'm waiting about two weeks, I'd like to see just a couple more interviews come in. And um, Tyler Giltek, who makes these ruck knives, he and I have become pretty good friends and really appreciate what he's doing. I love his American-made products. And we're going to do those drawing announcements starting in two weeks when he's going to be launching a, a Black Friday special that we'll be promoting for him. And um, I'm not a paid sponsor of Tyler. He does send me these things to give away, but uh, just really like his product. It is definitely something I will carry every day, everywhere. I think you are. Would you like a piece of bark? This piece right here is especially for you. Do you want it? Would you like it? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Silly dog. So the top log has been milled and now this is the middle log. And that split actually went all the way up. But it wasn't a total loss because I could isolate that split in just a couple pieces and, uh, and really take advantage of the ray fleck. In fact, that's why I milled up a bunch of one by twos because I quarter sawed them to get the ray fleck grain really pretty. And I'll stack those once we get log number one milled, I'll stack those on top and we'll just have our rick stack here.
Woody worm. He wasn't very dark, so that's a mild winter woolly worm. Stick around, dude. So I'm able to stack these two bys four wide, and that'll allow me to maximize my sticker space. There's no wonder space stuck. Well, you know, that's how it goes. Now I've saved my less desirables for the top because uh, I use their use them as dead weight. But if they don't warp too badly, then I can still salvage some some stuff out of them. That keeps me from having to go find cinder blocks and do all that stuff, or dig the slabs out from the slab pile. This is going to be a nice stack of wood. Now, the question is, am I going to video me trying to lift that board where I isolated the crack out? Because it's about one and a half times the thickness. It's going to be heavy. And I'm going to make grunting noises. There'll be sounds emanating from various parts of my body, most likely. That's YouTube, let's do it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Picking it up's one thing. Lifting it up to the top of that pile is gonna be the other. Without knocking everything over. Santa Maria. This pile's a little bit ridiculous. Whew. They bent, they bent, they puff, they bent. The reason why I stack those so high is to take advantage of the weight, holding them all down, of course, and doesn't take up as much space on the ground. If I mill something else, I can rick it right here. I may have to drive some T-posts on both sides of it, however, when the wind kicks up, because I really should be putting a, um, a piece of tin over top of that to keep the rain off of it. It's not really supposed to have direct contact with sunlight either. And as you can see, the, uh, all the afternoon sun this time of year comes right down through here. And with the leaves off the trees, it will be exposed on this side. My estimation, rough estimation, that's about 180 board feet, which is not bad because that's, that's some pretty red oak. And I like, I like wood that's got some personality to it. So this is definitely not number one. This is not select grade. Uh, if this was going to be flooring, it'd probably be the tavern grade flooring because it does have some knots and imperfection. It even has some uh, insect damage in it. But I think that's pretty cool. If it stays straight, and, and I was able to isolate the heart out of almost all of it, I believe. There's one piece I think the heart dipped up in. So it should stay pretty straight and not curl. If it does, then that may become loft flooring in the cabin extra wide red oak that'd be that'd be sexy wouldn't it timber well yes yes it would get on the scene with the sex machine well so you look at three logs that were from a deadfall that was shattered shattered base deadfall that most people would just leave in the woods or maybe turn into firewood but we were able to drag those three logs down and mill all three of them. The first log, or the highest log on the tree that we milled first, um, was, was kind of rough. It definitely had a lot of knots and imperfections in it. And I used about two-thirds of it to redeck the pig bridge. So I did two buys, 
two buys at Red Oak. So those would last a lot longer than the poplar ones I did three years ago. And now we've got about 180 board feet that just have some, has some beautiful, beautiful grain to it. And with the ability to isolate that split, so, you know, turned it so that the split ran 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, then in one pass, we are able to isolate 90% of that split and just let that be a sacrificial board that came off of there. If I'd have left that in any other position, you know, 12 to 6 or anything in between, then every single board would have had a little bit of that split in it, and it would have been pretty much worthless. I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of that width. So this really allowed me to maximize this. I'm really stoked about this. So I would say this one was definitely a win. Um, it was about 3.2 miles worth of skidding, uh, since we skidded one log at a time, and it was the very back of the property. And so a little bit of diesel burned there, but just the gasoline and the time. Um, this blade probably need to replace it. It had a lot of dirt in the bark, so I'll probably have to replace it, swap it out before I mill anything else. So sharpening one blade, three miles worth of diesel, a couple drops of gas. That Kohler or just sips gas on the sawmill. So not, not a huge expense. So I'm, I'm excited. Are you excited, Timber? You look excited. Give me a tail wag if you're excited. There it is.